What's up, weirdo? Shane Tree Surgeon here, and today we're having a race to last place in a battle of the worst motorcycle fanboys of all time. Now, if you know me, you know I don't care what you ride. I just like bike, baby. As long as you've got your knees in the breeze, that's just fine by me. But we all know those guys out there that have a knack for ruining anything. Those guys that just, they love something so hard that it, it kind of ruins it for you. It's a weird concept, but it's true. You ever meet somebody who stands for something just so hard that you just get secondhand embarrassed? and you really don't want to get lumped in with them, so you just end up liking whatever that thing is a little bit less. It's like when you, you watching this right now, a cool guy who's also a member of the Shade Tree Army Discord, when you see a bike you really like, you say something like, wow, that motorcycle is really awesome. Just ticks all the boxes for me. I find both its form and function quite pleasing. And the dude next to you is just like, Ooga! boy, is that one sexy bike. Mm, just pure sex, it's so hot. I think I might have messed my pants, know what I mean? I want to lay with that bike in a biblical sense as I would a woman. I want to marry that motorcycle and buy a nice starter home in the suburbs. I want to have babies with that motorcycle, take out a second mortgage on my home and invest in crypto, lose everything, but pretend like everything is fine and we're not about to lose the house. I just want that bike to leave me and take the kids with it. Ooh, I just want to slowly drive by that motorcycle's new house and peer through the window with a couple of ice cold Mickey's Big Mouse in my lap and look at its new life without me. Oh yeah, I just want to burn that bike's new house down with it inside it. If I can't have it, nobody can. Ah, oh, that is one sexy motorcycle. So yeah, those guys ruined it just a little bit. And if I'm being honest, I think it's because when you see something you really like and then you meet somebody else who likes it like just so hard, who likes it too much, you see a small reflection of yourself in them and you really don't like it. It just feels really gross to look at your special interests through the funhouse mirror of obsession. And then there's the feudalism fanboys. Like the guys who just arbitrarily like a brand of motorcycles, maybe because their parents rode it, or maybe it just happened to be the first bike they ever got. These are the guys that the propaganda worked on. They are armed to the teeth with facts, figures, spec sheets, and they will die for that brand. They will die before they let anyone besmirch the noble name of their chosen brand. Say one ill word on a motorcycle forum and it's pistols at dawn, Dave. And they will fight with the religious fervor of a crusader. This is Manifest Destiny and they're fighting a holy war. It's not just enough to defeat you in the comments section with their undeniable powerful spec sheet. They also have to convert you. Position. They live to grow the armies of their lord and master brand, whoever that might be. They would rather ritualistically disembowel themselves before they ever admit any other brand is even slightly superior. We're doing this bracket style and randomized, which means there could be some upsets in the early rounds of this race to the bottom. And I know someone is just like moving at the speed of sound to the comment section right now to comment some super boutique tiny motorcycle brand that I left off this list. And I'm telling you right now, I just don't care. I just don't care about like Theodore Esteban's motorized cycle work emporium that produces like three vegan steam powered motorcycles a year. Just miss me with that shit, okay? Anyway, there can be only one. Let us do battle upon this field where no one wins. One stand to rule them all. Now fight. Meet your champions. Honda, Momo, QT, Royal and Pin. BMW, Harley Davidson, Kawasaki, KTM, Yamaha, Usarna, Suzuki, Aprilia, Buell, Duel Fighting, Triumph, Zero, India. Round one, fight. First up, we've got Honda versus Moto Guzzi. Now, Moto Guzzi might be a smaller brand, but they still have some really annoying fans. It's like the kind of guys who like something different just 
for the sake of being different. And I only find it kind of annoying because besides the fact that they mount the engine longitudinally, there's nothing really else that's that special about the motorcycle. It just kind of seems like when everyone was picking out how they were going to mount their engines, Moto Gucci had to pick last and instead of pretending like it was the only choice still available, they're just like, no, no, it's like, it's better. It's better this way. This is, this is the best, clearly the best way to do it. It's like one of those dudes who plays stand-up bass in a rockabilly band and he's got those like big fluorescent strings on there that look like weed whacker wire and everyone tries to pretend like it sounds like better somehow. It's different. You just gotta, you just gotta be into it, but it really just sounds kind of worse and looks really unwieldy. Now Honda. I'm sure Honda fans thought that this was gonna be an easy win for Honda, that Moto Guzzi fans were gonna be infinitely worse than Honda fans because Hondas are just so perfect in every way. There's absolutely no way a Honda fan could be worse than a Gucci fan. After all, Honda is the thinking man's choice. And for that reason, Honda fans are definitely worse. Dudes who stand for Honda are just like the worst kind of insufferable. The kind of guy who looks at some clapped out Honda with half a million miles on it and just inevitably says something like, well, hell boys, that thing's just there getting broken in, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, Honda loses that one easily and moves on to the next round. Round one. Next up is Triumph versus Ducati, and this one's way harder. You can imagine the fans of both coffee shop heroes, thousand dollar leather jackets, one little gold earring, and sparkle, sparkle, and vintage Alpine Star boots. They're definitely Americans, but they're always sporting a Union Jack or an Italian flag on some article of clothing. They work some sort of nebulous tech type job where they make a ton of money and they live in an austere modern loft that's got about as much personality as a doctor's office. Office. And their motorcycle is usually far and above the most interesting thing about them. As far as modern Ducatis and modern Triumphs go, I think it's kind of a wash. They're the same picture. Definitely a photo finish on whose fans are the worst, so we gotta go vintage. And old school Triumph guys are actually kind of awesome. They build choppers, they're into flat track racing. Most of them can put a new top end on a 650 Triumph Twin in the same amount of time it takes your favorite BPD cutie at the coffee shop to do the latte art on top of your 50 $15 coffee. Now, vintage Ducati guys? They're literally the exact same person as the modern Ducati guys. Except they wear those weird hats, like those weird Peaky Blinder hats that dudes over 40 always wear to let you know that they're interesting. Yeah, I gotta give the L to Ducati fans on that one. Honestly, it's hard to believe that Triumph is out on the first round, but Ducatistas are a powerful force of cringe. Round one, fight. Now, I don't know much about Zero, the brand, but I have to assume that their stands are probably the exact same kind of insufferable as most electric car fans. Just always scoffing at the inefficiency and the dirtiness of ice engines, talking about how you ride a dinosaur and they're the way of the future. Just desperately trying to justify why their soulless, silent, skim milk motorcycle isn't just like a malignant caricature of a gasoline-powered motorcycle. And Kawasaki stands, those are definitely one-upper guys. They're like that kid in the third grade, you remember who I'm talking about, the one that you told you went fishing over the weekend and he immediately told you that he went fishing too, except that he caught a great white shark. Just like ridiculously overcompensating for an absent father figure. The Kawasaki H2 literally looks like it was designed by an eight year old whose dad left for cigarettes and never came back. Well, unfortunately, little Billy, I don't care how many superchargers you put on that Kawasaki, it'll never be fast enough to find Papa. This one's actually a really tough pick on who's worse. I personally identify with the Kawasaki stand like way more so like I really want to say that they're not worse than the Zero guys but I am trying to stay impartial. I don't know man I think I gotta give the Zero fans the L on this one anyway. And only because I'm imagining them saying well technically only I ride a motorcycle because a motor is powered by electricity. You actually ride an engine cycle. Mm. Just for that alone Zero fans are definitely worse than Kawasaki fans. They take the L on that one. I fucking hate that. Round one, fight. Aprilia versus Husqvarna. This is 
is a little tough one. And it's really only because I don't know that much about Aprilia. My gut reaction when someone says Aprilia is just to be like, oh, you mean like great value Ducati? But I only want to say that because in my head, I think it would piss off Aprilia guys. It's literally the only reason. I don't actually have any idea if like, Aprilia is supposed to be better or worse than Ducati. I feel like I gotta give the L on this one to Husky fans because they're literally just the opposite of great value KTM. It's hilarious that they're white because they are literally white label KTMs. Husqvarna fans are like Costco members who just rave about how great Kirkland stuff is. They pay a premium for rebadged KTMs and will rave up and down about how much better it is. Round one, fight. Next up, the very unfairly matched Harley Davidson and Royal Enfield. Royal Enfields are a bike that you don't really choose. They just sort of happen to you. Like people end up with Royal Enfields because they went into a BMW dealership and when they ran their credit, like a little flag pops up on the computer that says, take them to the Royal Enfield section of the store. And some people kind of get into Royal Enfields, but it's always so half-hearted. Maybe they'll have like one Royal Enfield t-shirt, but the second that they upgrade to a Triumph or a Beamer, that Enfield shirt goes straight to Goodwill. Harley Davidson, come on man, it's no competition at all. Like one single Harley stand from Northwest Arkansas with a bar and shield tattoo and Sons of Anarchy on laser disc could defeat the entirety of the Royal Enfield fandom in a cringe battle. Harley takes the L for sure. Round one, fight. Now, Indian versus Buell, now, this is a fight. Buell and Indian fans are both god level tier cringe lords, but they're like the yin and yang of motorcycle brand stands. Indian, they're like the industry plant of motorcycle brands. They're like Steve Buscemi pretending to be a high school student. How do you do, fellow kids? What? And man, Indian's biggest fans are just like so ready, so just desperate. They yearn to just get into any dick measuring competition with a Harley guy that they can. Just instantaneously. It's like that old saying, how do you know if someone's vegan? Well, don't worry, they'll tell you. Well, that also applies to Indian fanboys. If they see a guy on a Harley, 100% unprovoked, they will go directly up to them and start explaining why their motorcycle is better in every way. The slightly annoying but mostly funny part about all that is unless they're measuring themselves against a Harley Davidson, they don't really have anything else to talk about. The entire culture of the brand exists only as a manufactured second option to Harley. Now Buell also only exists at the whim of Harley Davidson and man do their fans hate that when you bring it up. It's like hating your parents because they bought you a Volvo 940 station wagon as a graduation present instead of a Nissan GTR. Oh, I hate you. They've got their tragic Christ figure in Eric Buell, who was persecuted and crucified by the evil Harley Empire. The whole Eric Buell worship thing is hilarious to me because that guy never wanted to make street bikes at all. He only wanted to make race bikes. I promise you this, Eric Buell could not give one wet fart about any motorcycle that had to have turn signals on it. Buell motorcycles is what Harley required him to do in order to give him a race team, and he kind of phoned it in. I guess a religious comparison in this is actually kind of fitting because he's definitely like that distant, uncaring God figure who cares not for your mortal street legal troubles. For he has a higher calling. I guess I gotta give the L to Indian fans on this one, but only because I know it'll piss off Indian stands so much to know that they're worse than anything that has even the slightest bit to do with Harley Davidson. And it'll also pull double duty and piss off all the Buell fans just as much because once again, they didn't make the cut. Round one, fight. Now KTM versus BMW is another interesting one because their fandoms have so much crossover. The GS crowd is worse than Apple guys when a new iPhone comes out and the vintage BMW people, man, they're almost at Honda levels of smugness when it comes to longevity claims. I feel like the ADV crowd is definitely what stands out though. And the BMW GS is the Land Rover Defender to the KTM's Jeep Wrangler. Both of them are getting bought because of some internal yearning for just the slightest amount of adventure in another 
otherwise milquetoast existence. But one is an obvious status symbol of adventure, and the other one comes in really fun colors. KTM, of course, has the two-stroke dirt bike crowd, but all of those guys are super cool, very handsome, not cringe at all. Those guys, those guys are amazing. I don't even want to bring those guys into this, okay? And of course, BMW has attract a missile bros, but they're just they don't really make up that large of a percentage of BMW cringe lords. Just like your typical GS fanboy, the guy whose auxiliary fog lights cost more than an entire KLR 650, a guy who has everything from an axe to a bidet on his bike for a camping trip, the guy who quotes long way round with stars in his eyes, that guy's just a spokesperson for brand stands in general. Beamer takes the L on this one. Round one, fight. And now the last fight of the first round. Yamaha versus Suzuki. Yamaha has a long list of fanboy favorites. That army recruit serial killer, the R6. The apex predator, the crossplane R1. And of course, the VMAX supremacist. But Suzuki defeats them all with one sweep of a named blade. One single word is all you need to hear to declare Suzuki's fandom infinitely more cringe than Yamaha's. Hayabusa, Hayabusa, Hayabusa. It's showtime. Round two, fight. All right, let's get into round two. First up, Honda versus Ducati. You could not get two fandoms that are more opposite than Honda and Ducati. You've got Ducatistas on one manicured, perfumed hand, the Epicurean worshippers of Dionysus. No amount of faulty electronics or terrible, outdated valve trains or astronomically expensive repair bills could ever keep them from proclaiming their brand vastly superior. Hell, most of them think that the price of repair is actually a very excellent gig keeping method for keeping those grubby pores on the outside looking in. And on the other hand, you've got the cold calculating efficiency of Honda stands. Perfect motorcycles that don't do anything too well. After all, the tallest tree gets the ax. They plug, they plod, and they are as perpetual as their greatest stands disdain for any other motorcycle brand. All those other bikes are flashing bells and whistles, doodads and gizmos. <laughs> all those sparkles are not needed on the eternally stoic Honda. If it was just these two groups, be a pretty hard choice. But it ain't. That's because Honda also has all those super temperamental, high-strung motorcycles that masochists just go wild for. Everything from the RC51 V-Twin to the barely disguised race replica, the VF1000R, the CBX1000, the Honda Rune, the list of insane, impractical, super niche motorcycles that Honda's made over the years goes on and on and on. The stands of the Honda weirdo bikes are just as bad as the Ducatistas. And for that, I gotta give Honda the L this round and send the Ducati boys pack. Round two, fight. Zero versus Husqvarna. I gotta say, I think Zero was kind of a one-trick pony. You know, I have my little straw man dad joke about engines and motors that I just still actually do assume that Zero owners make, but I just don't think it's quite douchey enough to compete with names like Svartpilen and Vitpilen. Husky is like leaning into the Swedish thing so hard with their names. I don't know if every single Husky stand leans into the whole, like I'm a Swedish Viking and this is my Swedish Viking motorcycle. It's hard as like the few guys that I know who do it, but those few guys are enough. And we will hold our battle cries. In the earth we shall kill. Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. They're the same picture. At least they're enough for me to give the L to Husky over zero. Round two, fight. Harley Davidson versus Indian. This is gonna be a good one, boys. I'm so torn on this one. I don't know who's going to be in the final battle, but I feel like deciding this one right now is gonna be harder than deciding the ultimate last place. It's so tough for me because cringy Indian stands have come out swinging. So damn hard, man. I mean, Indian has plastered its logo on every single thing you can imagine from t-shirts to tampons. Each tampon is hand woven from over 200 strands of Cherokee hair. And the Indian fanboys have their rhetoric down pat. They're just so concerned and know every little way to just 
just edge out Harley by the smallest amount. They've even got something called the 1901 Club. I'm not kidding. Go on their website and look it up. And it's where you take a picture of your mileage on your Indian when it's at 1,901 miles. I'm not sitting here trying to argue that Indian is or isn't better than Harley Davidson. I'm just saying that Indian fanboy's personality is based entirely around being better than something else. If it wasn't for a few other factors, that make me instantly give the L to Indian. But it's Harley fucking Davidson we're talking about here. I would even venture to say that it might be a tie between Harley fans and Indian fans for the worst if we're just going by modern day standards. But we've got generations of assholes on Harley Davidson's. Harley fanboys have been an ever evolving douchebag since pretty much day one. Everything from outlaw biker clubs in the 50s and 60s to the disco cocaine cowboys in the 70s, the yuppies and the rubs in the 80s and 90s, the fat tired dad choppers of the 2000s, big wheel baggers, dyna bros, uppity FXR owners, and gatekeeping chopper hipsters. It's a wide and fractured kingdom of infighting and civil war, but it is all encompassing. There is not a space that exists in the world of motorcycles that a Harley Davidson fanatic has not made slightly shittier. Hard choice, boys, hard choice, but Harley takes the L on that one. Round two, fight. BMW versus Suzuki. Suzuki's named weapon, the Hayabusa, was enough to keep all the Yamaha fans safe in the first round, but will it be powerful enough to outdouche the Beamer boys? Well, here in round two, Suzuki is dual wielding. In one hand still rests that douche rocket, the Hayabusa, and in the other appears the legendary squid missile, the Jixer. Suzuki is woefully short on weapons, but they have two of the most desirable ones, at least when it comes to what a mutant gas station zombie desires. Suzuki fanboys are absolutely the type of person to approach you in a gas station parking lot, bum a cigarette, and then proceed to tell you that they've taken their Jixer 600 above 200 miles an hour, and uh, they had to sell their Hayabusa because they just didn't need to go that fast. Hey, smooth skin, haven't you ever seen a ghoul before? Powerful, very powerful, but I just don't think it's enough to out-douche the Beamer boys. I don't even think that BMW would need to pull out its S1000 squids or its R9T hipsters for this one. It's got enough douche to drown Suzuki in the adventure segment alone. After all, there is nothing that any other motorcycle manufacturer can do that BMW can't do except for more money and less reliability. Truly an astounding L by BMW. Final round, fight. Time for the semi-finals, boys. Honda versus Husqvarna. This one's short and sweet. As cringy as the pretend Viking fans of Husky are, there just aren't that many of them. Honda stands are a wide, vast army, and they easily take the L over Husqvarna. Barely a contest. Final round, fight. Harley Davidson versus BMW. I gotta tell you this. Even though I think that BMW's worst fans would still give Harley Davidson's worst fans a better run for their money than Husky gave to Honda, it's still an easy L to Harley's worst fans over BMW. BMW's certainly trying. They're trying really hard. They've got their R9T and they got the, the R18. Taking a page out of Indian and Harley Davidson's book, BMW's also really leaning in hard to the heritage of their motorcycles, except for that one little bit of time in the 1940s. What are you doing? Hmm? What are you doing? <laughs> Nothing. Me? <laughs> Just hanging around. No one really knows what they were up to then. It's, it's really quite a mystery. And while Harley can't even come close to matching the douchiness of the GS boys with its Pan Am, Harley Davidson still easily takes the L. <laughs> And that leaves us with two titans, two pillars of douche. Honda and Harley in a knockdown drag out fight for the bottom of the barrel. This one's pretty epic, boys. And I know Honda fans and Harley fans well enough to know that they're both gonna be in the comment section just rooting for their team to take home last place. These are the type of stands who are just so fervent, so rabid that they won't for a heartbeat accept being second to anyone, even if it's second to last place. Man, this is hard, man. I haven't even talked about the 
V-Rod fanboys, they're almost as bad as Buell owners. I feel like Harley guys are the only guys who are so just blindly die hard Harley Davidson that they will proclaim to hate Harley Davidson the brand while still exclusively riding Harley Davidson motorcycles. Like whenever Harley Davidson does anything, it could be something as small as like announcing a new color option. Anytime Harley Davidson moves so much as a pinky finger, my YouTube homepage is just filled with videos of boomers decrying the unforgivable crimes of Harley Davidson. We have found the witch, might we burn? I'm not ready. Burn! Yellow? A yellow collar option? How dare they? Go woke, go broke. Harley Davidson has betrayed us, its loyal customers, with this liberal, non-binary agenda. Yellow collar option only available this year. Ha <laughs> ha! And meanwhile, they're recording this video in front of like a $40,000 Harley Davidson Electra Glide, and it's like the 10th Harley they bought. Honestly, more hilarious than anything. And of course, I say all this with love. A lot of the guys who make videos like that are actually really good friends of mine and hey man, if you can't poke fun at your friends, then you don't have very good friends. But is it enough? Is that enough to topple that towering kaiju Honda? I haven't even brought up Honda Fury owners and honestly, I'm kind of afraid to. Fury owners are the most dead serious owners group you've ever seen in your life. And they will straight up throw hands at even the slightest perceived insult to their motorcycle. I heard you were talking shit about me. What the fuck? Seriously, Fury guys have zero sense of humor. Tragically, they also have no sense of style or taste in motorcycles either. It's, it's really a sad story. Honda also has the racing stands, and they're even so bold they use the red, white, and blue for the HRC livery. You're on thin ice, by the way, Honda. I don't know who the hell you think you are just waltzing in here and slapping red, white, and blue on your motorcycles. Those colors are for America, okay? Honda's on notice for that one, but man, I'll tell you, these racing stands, the racing fanboys, these guys are on a whole ass other level. They are the worst parts of a spec sheet warrior and blind loyalty all wrapped up into a single cretin. Okay, 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 I gotta make a decision. Let me, let me put it like this. If we're talking about just America, just the USA, then yeah, Harley would have taken it home, no contest. There's no facet of the two-wheeled world, at least here in America, that a Harley Davidson fanboy hasn't made slightly worse. But I'm sorry, man, on a global douche scale, I don't think Harley can compete. Now, don't get me wrong, I think that any one dedicated single Harley Cretan could take on a Honda stand in single combat. The Harley boys, they definitely take home the L in a, in a gentleman's duel, if you will. But it's just the sheer number of Honda stands. They just overwhelm the Harley douchebags like a bunch of spec sheet quoting ants running like a river over a grizzly bear with a bar and shield tattoo and a leather jacket. Truly, the meek shall inherit the earth. I almost can't believe it myself. I feel like I don't even agree with the final outcome. Is it really possible that Honda stands are the worst overall fans in the entire world? It just seems crazy to me that anybody could beat Harley Davidson to the bottom of the barrel when it comes to insufferable stands, but if anybody could do it, it's Honda. Hey, if you disagree with me, and I know you do, then leave me a comment down below and tell me why your pick for the worst fans in the motorcycle world is better than mine. This is just my very flawed and biased opinion. Which is a flawed and biased opinion that I will fight to the death over. I'll literally die on any hill. It doesn't even really have to be a hill, man. I'll, I'll die on a speed bump if the mood's right. Huge thanks to the Papa Meat channel for this video format. I've never done one like this, and honestly, it was a lot of fun. Go check him out. I'll have him linked down below. He's one of my very favorite non-motorcycle channels here on YouTube, and it was specifically his video on who has the smelliest fandom, also done in bracket style, that inspired me to make this vid. Hey, that's actually a good one. Why don't you leave me a comment down below on which motorcycle fandom has the smelliest people in it. I know, I know the knee-jerk reaction is gonna be Harley Davidson, but don't forget to consider
consider the kind of sallow skin gas station mutant who favors a Jixer, okay? And if you're interested in having a named sword of your own to lord it over all the other Honda owners, we are giving away this CBX 1000. With this inline six cylinder super sport, this mint 82 over here, last year of production, you'll be able to claim your rightful place as ruler of any Honda polycule. 100% of all raffle tickets sold from this go directly to Forgotten Angels to help them fight homelessness and the cycle of abuse in the foster care system. You too can be a bad person doing good things. That link's down below. Let's get back to it for this one, y'all. Don't forget to leave a like on the video and please hit that subscribe button. It does help out a lot. We're here for you every single Wednesday and Sunday and sometimes Monday on the Shade Tree Surgeon channel. Until next time, y'all, keep it weird. Crashing through the sky comes a fearful cry. Shade Tree. Shade tree, army, armies of the night, evil taking flight. Shade tree, army, shade tree, army. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Panic spreading far and wide. Can the world oppose the dead? of foes, shade tree, army, shade tree, army, who will risk it all to end the evil call of shade tree, army, shade tree, army, they never give up, they never say die, walking tall with banners high. Shade Tree Army, a ruthless gang of scum, villains, freaks, and bikers determined to rule the world.